All right, party people. So this is my second edition real life cheat code, double stack 1911. And not only does it help you shoot faster, more accurately, but now it's smaller, lighter weight, and faster than the original version. So welcome back party people. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. For those of you guys that remember, I reviewed this gun back in November of 2022. And if you're thinking, wait a second, it looks just like the first one. Well, it kind of is and it isn't. This is the Tactical Toolbox Edition Legion Precision 2011. So when we released the original version, the only downside was that everybody wanted one. There was only gonna be five ever made. Now, despite me telling everyone that there was not gonna be any more ever made, Legion Precision said that there was over 250 people that went to that listing and put in their email address to be notified when it came back in stock. So when I made the original review, I said a couple things in that video. The first thing I said was, I wish that it was available in a commander size. So now we have a commander size. It's much smaller, it's lighter weight, and as you'll see when we get to the shooting footage, it actually shoots a lot faster. They also made some other changes too that we'll get to here in a second. Now what's gonna be unique about this one is there's not gonna be just five made. So if you missed out on the first one, there won't be a limited supply of, but they are made to order. You will have to wait on them. Sometimes when I make these videos, people think, oh yeah, you're just a shill, you're being biased. I'm always gonna be biased towards things that I like. But when it comes to money and stuff, that actually doesn't affect my bias. For example, I paid full price for this full size 2011 last year. I gave it a great review. I've had guns on this channel that I didn't pay anything for and didn't even have to send it back to the company and I trashed them. I, I don't care if you guys believe me or not, but my goal is to give you the real world experience as it happens in my hands with these guns and accessories that we review on this channel. So I say all that to say this, yes, these guns are named after me, whatever. I didn't create that, that wasn't my idea. I think they're cool, but I don't really have much of an ego when it comes to that stuff. And so if this gun fails in today's video, you're gonna know about it. Take that as a grain of salt, I don't really care. That actually reminds me of something. As we go through the video, guys, you're gonna be seeing a lot of cool parts and things like that. And I will put a parts list together for everything that you see in this video. If you wanna find the parts list, it's the very first link in the description. And I'll also pin that link down in the comment section for you as well. Additionally, guys, the YouTube algorithm has not been our friend here on YouTube as of lately. So if you could do me a huge favor, if you're not, just hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications. The reason that I ask you guys to do that is with the way the algorithm is now designed, it changes all the time. But as of right now, if you hit the subscribe button on any video on YouTube, it will recommend these videos to people who have never been exposed to Second Amendment content before. And in my opinion, there's no better way to stick it to the anti-gunners than to get a video trending in the algorithm. In order to understand Legion Precision, the way that they make 2011s is they will drop a batch of five 2011s. And then once that batch sells out, they'll never make another one like that. And one of the reasons why Legion Precision chooses to do them in small batches is they notice that with a lot of companies that make really nice 2011s, once they become popular, everybody and their brother has one. And so in order to keep them special, they make small batches in a different design in a different colorway. They're also more affordable than some of their competition because each one of these is completely built and fitted by hand by only two or three people, and they use the highest quality of parts. And when you see the price here in a little bit, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised, but just understand this, there's no way to get a custom hand-fitted 2011 that is as good a quality as these for cheap. And so, ballers on a budget, stay tuned. We'll talk about something else here in a little bit. Now, these 2011s, regardless if they're full size or the compact, they are designed for two specific purposes in mind, competition and self-defense. In fact, the owner actually carries one of these, not the toolbox edition, but he carries one of these 2011s every single day. So if that tells you anything, at least it tells you that he trusts his life with it. So they're kind of like the best of both worlds. They have the reliability and the consistency of a self-defense gun, but they have all the features of the race guns, like shooting super flat and being nice and weighted so that you can shoot them fast. First, let's get into the specs of this, and then we're gonna talk about the changes that we made on this one 
one versus this one. This one is a four and a quarter inch commander size. This one is a five inch size. All of their 2011s use a match grade KKM hand fitted barrel. Another difference to be noted in the barrel is the porting. So on the full size model, you'll see two ports on the very top of the slide. And on the compact model, you have a V style port where they essentially took that same porting and doubled it and put one at each side, kind of like a V8 motor. We'll talk more about those as we get to the shooting footage, but it's something to be noted. As of right now, every single slide that they've produced, regardless of which model it was and which colorway it was, have a tri-top design slide. There's typically three types of designs when it comes to the tops of 2011 and 1911 slides. You have the rounded top, you have a flat top, and then you have the tri-top. And I like the tri-top the best because it gives your thumb, the webbing of your thumb, just a little bit of a caressing when you wanna do press checks on it. All of their 2011s uh, come with an optic plate that is cut for the Trigicon footprint, uh, meaning it'll fit the Trigicon SRO, which is included with it. Or you can fit a Trigicon RMR or a Holosun 507C or 407C. I don't have confirmation on the newest, like the Trigicon RCR and the Trigicon RMR HD but I will be getting those in the future. And when I do, I'll test them and see, because I know their footprints, although they use the RMR footprint, there's some wonky things about them. Although this one also includes the Trujicon SRO, it's a different SRO than what was included with the original. The OG full size had a 5 MOA Trujicon SRO. Now we have the 2.5 MOA Trujicon SRO. The reason for that is supply chain, but the other reason for that is because some people don't like the big dots. And some people like tiny dots, like one MOA. So they figured they'd kind of meet them in the middle, do two and a half MOA. And the cool thing about doing a smaller dot than what you think you need is you can turn up the brightness and you can make that dot bloom out and make it appear a lot larger than it actually is. And so I think that's a good middle ground for a 2.5 MOA dot. Although both of the slides are tri-top design, one thing is different. The smaller version doesn't have the knurling on the top. And at first I thought I wasn't gonna like that, but I actually don't mind it at all. I don't even notice it. But I did notice that they actually made the tri-top on the very top ledge much more narrow than the original. And they did that so that they could save some weight on the slide because when they went from making full-size guns down to commander size, the recoil characteristics and the weight of everything has to be made perfectly so that the gun will shoot as flat as possible. The next difference on the slide is if you look at the OG version, it says LPWS for Legion Precision Weapon Systems. On the smaller commander model, there's no logos on it anywhere. If you guys watched any of my videos in the past when I used to do a lot of Glock slide reviews, one of my biggest things that I didn't like was big logos on the side. Now, I think that they did it very tastefully on the OG version, but the fact that they kind of just debadged it kind of makes it look a lot better. The frame on this one, because it's a commander size, we now have one Picatinny slot instead of the two that were on the full size. However, as you can see on this gun, I'm able to fit my Surefire X300 on here, no problems. And in fact, I didn't even have to change out the plate on the X300. It'll swap right over from one gun to the next gun and fit without any wobble. That is on the X300, I believe these are the B. I'll have links. In regards to their trigger, they were using a red dirt trigger. And for the trigger internals, they're using the EGW ignition kits. I don't remember which ignition kit they're using because there's multiple different variations, but they make very high-end trigger kits and they feel amazing. Speaking of the trigger, the full size, my trigger gauge pulls at 2.5 pounds, but on the compact model, I'm pulling at 3.5 pounds, and I'm assuming that's because more people are gonna carry a compact gun than are gonna carry the full size. More people would use these for competitions than these, and so I'm assuming he made it a little bit heavier just for that reason. Another difference that you will notice in the triggers is on the original, you had all these little cuts and see-through pieces on there, and honestly, for me, I just wasn't the biggest fan of the design of the trigger. I do like the fact that it's a flat trigger, and these are long-reach triggers. There's different reaches you can get. They're short, medium, and long, and I believe these are long, but I haven't heard anyone complain about them, so. There's always that. But I wanted a solid trigger, and that's exactly what they put in here, was a solid trigger. So now not only does it feel good, but it also looks good. The safety selector on the Commander is exactly the same safety selector that is on the full size. They're using the double tap safeties. When I first started shooting this gun on the original version, I didn't like the safeties being that large, but as I started shooting it more and more, 
I've actually really grown to like it a lot because when you go out, you know, you ride the safety right here. And then when you wanna come back, you can literally just pop it up with your index finger or you could use your thumb if you want. Now, the grip is made from aluminum, but you will notice a big difference between the OG version and this one. I love this grip that's on the full size, but I really love this grip that's on the Commander now so much better. I felt like with this one, it was nice. It was a good pointer and I was able to shoot it really well, but I felt like there was a void in the middle of my hand. And this little palm swell that's in here right now really fills the hand nicely. And I'm able to grip this much better, which means that I'm able to mitigate recoil, not that there's much, a lot easier as well. And to me, that is a big difference just in the way that it feels. Since we're talking about the grip, something else should be noted. This is the same across all of uh, Legion Precision's 2011s. They delete the backstrap safety, and I like that. At first, I didn't think I would like it, but I love it. I wish that the all 2011s would delete it. It's awesome, because if you're gonna carry these guns, you're gonna carry them cocked and locked, right? It's not gonna go off. Say something happened to your support hand, and you got a weird angle, and you can't push that grip safety, your trigger won't go off. A lot of people that have guns that have grip safety, sometimes they'll put a ranger band around their grip just to keep that safety depressed. So that's always a cool thing. I'll have some links for ranger bands if you wanna check them out over at the parts list. But, but I just wanted to show you that. It's a very good, subtle little design. Now, something that you can't see right here because I swapped them out is the commanders will be coming with silver or stainless steel hardware on the screws that are on the grip and the screws that are in front of the trigger guard. The reason my are black is because I had an extra set laying around and I swapped them out. The only reason that they switched from black hardware over to stainless steel is because of supply chain issues. But honestly, I'll have links at the parts list. You can find packs of these black screws for nothing, or you could just paint them yourself or Sharpie them or get some Aluma black and change colors. It's not a huge deal, but it's something to be noted. The Magwell is exactly the same Magwell that's on the full size. And I think this is the perfect Magwell size for these types of guns. You could actually conceal these under a shirt, which I'll show you here in a minute when we get to holsters and stuff like that, but you can conceal them very well, but they're large enough to help you do mag reloads and to really hang on to it with your grip. Now, earlier in the video, I said that this one was lighter than the OG one. In fact, it's five ounces lighter. The OG version weighs two pounds, 14.5 ounces, and this one weighs two pounds and nine ounces. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, five ounces, but trust me when I tell you that when you hold these guns out, regardless of the lights on there, you can really feel the difference in the weight on them. Now that seems counterintuitive because usually when you want a gun that gets no recoil hardly, you want a lot of weight out front, but they did some magic to this to make it shoot just as flat as this one. Now on the guide rod, they're still using the guide rods that you capture with a paper clip. Now, but what's different about the guide rod, aside from it being a little shorter than the full size, is they're now using a 15 pound recoil spring. Whereas on the OG, they were using an eight pound recoil spring. That will be important later when we get to the shooting footage. So keep that in your noggin until then. Now, another big change comes in the magazines. Before on the OG version, you got two or three different staccato mags. I believe you got two 17 rounders and you got one 26. Now you're gonna get three magazines, all 17 rounds, at least with the Commander, and they're made from Atlas instead of staccato. When we get to the shooting footage, and I'm talking about malfunctions, you'll understand why. Now, the biggest difference between the OG and the newer version is the case that it comes in. Before, they came with a bone dry case. It's a pistol range bag that actually has a really cool technology of getting moisture out and not letting moisture in. However, now you're gonna get a Pelican vault case and the foam is not cut. They left it that way intentionally so that you could cut it to the way that you want it to be. They didn't want to force people into a certain configuration on the foam, but still great case, also waterproof. They're amazing cases. I expected the shooting characteristics to be a little different than the original version. First thing that I noticed that kind of threw me off a little bit because of the V-style porting, when you're shooting this, you actually feel the wind or the gases um, hitting you in the face. In fact, when you're looking at the footage, you'll see me blinking because I wasn't really expecting it. Once I started expecting it, I stopped blinking as much 
but it's almost like a rush of wind. It's not like a concussive force or anything, but it is something that I noted. By the way, I wanted to give a big shout out and a thank you to the guys at Scottsdale Gun Club. It's been incredibly hot here, like 115 degrees. And even if I could bear the heat and my cameras wouldn't shut off, it's highly illegal for us to shoot in the summertime outdoors here because of fire restrictions. I wanted to say thank you to those guys because they allowed me to come in, go beyond the line so that we could get the footage that we need for these videos. And so I just want to say thank you to those guys. I'll have a link for them over at the parts list if you're local and you want to check them out. Now, the other interesting thing that I noticed was when I first started shooting this, I started shooting it in the same configuration as I did on the full size and meaning I put the Surefire X300 on here because I wanted it to be as comparable to this as possible because all my footage that I had from last year's video had a Surefire X300 on it. I was looking at the slow motion footage. When you see the gun recoiling, it looks a little bit bouncy. I post on Instagram not too long ago where I did a comparison of the recoil impulse in slow motion with this one and this one, but the light was on this one. And someone made the comment that it looked like the light on the compact was making it more bouncy than it should have been. So I was like, you know, that's a great idea. When I was going back to the range to get more footage, I shot these both with no light on them and they are just as flat as one another. That really says something about the engineering from Legion Precision because they did a phenomenal job on it. Even when you put the light on the full size, it's a little more bouncy than without it. And that's because these have been tuned without a light on it. It's kind of like when I first got this one and I had the light on it, I felt like it was a little bit bouncy, right? It had, they come with an eight pound spring on their full size. And so I got a seven pound spring, put it in and it got rid of the bounce. These on the other hand, have a 15 pound spring in them. And so I'm assuming if I, I don't have any right now, I just ordered, I ordered some, but they haven't arrived yet, a spring kit. Assuming that if I put a lighter spring in here with the light on it, it might be a little bit less bouncy, but that's to be determined. But the other thing that you should pay attention to is how much faster the slide reciprocates on the compact versus the full size. Other thing that you might notice is some people said it looks like the slide on this one was dragging on this guy. Um, that's because I hadn't cleaned this thing since I got it. And so that's the reason it was dragging, had a lot of carbon buildup. As soon as I cleaned it, it started shooting phenomenally well. So some things to note in regards to the way that it feels. Interestingly enough, even though these guns have the exact same recoil impulse, this one feels, it's not snappier. It's just everything happens so much faster that you're almost not ready for the next shot, like in your head. So when with this one, you know, even though it's slower in real time, the slide is moving really fast. And so by the time it's reset, I'm able to pull the trigger almost the moment that it resets. Whereas this one, on the other hand, sometimes there's a delay between the moment where it resets and then I pull the trigger again something else that I just noted about it. As of right now, I've got about four or 500 rounds through it. I've lost count at this point and I've tested multiple types of ammo. The majority of the ammo was factory new, 115 grain, blazer brass. And I shot some AAC ammo out of it as well. Um, I shot 124 grain and 115 grain. And I started running into a problem with the commander. The slide wasn't locking open on the last round on a consistent basis. So my first initial thought was either something's wrong with the slide stop or maybe it's oversprung and it's just not slinging it far back enough, you know, to lock open. So Mike from Tactical Considerations happened to have some 124 grain NATO, nine millimeter on him, and we still couldn't get it to lock open. It was really confusing. So I started doing some digging on the internet and I found these 2011 magazines, especially these staccato magazines, when you're dropping them, doing mag changes and stuff like that, these feed lips at the top can lose their dimensionality. Not only that, but this 
thickness of these can get fatter because if you drop them, um, sometimes when they hit, the weight comes down and it makes them expand out a little bit. So I found a video from Atlas Gunworks actually, who made a video on how to check the measurements of your feed lips and the width of your magazine. He shows you how to adjust them and things like that. I'll be sure to include a link to that video. And there is one special tool you need. It's not expensive, it's like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll have a link to that at the parts list. But I followed his video. I adjusted the four mags that I had. When I went back to the range, three out of the four mags started locking open every single time. Turns out that the failure to lock open on the last round wasn't even the gun, it was the mags the whole time. Hence, Legion Precision is now switching to Atlas magazines instead of Staccato magazines. Another interesting note about that is, as I was researching on how to fix this problem, I learned that a lot of competition shooters actually modify their magazine so that they don't lock open on the last round. I thought that was odd, but apparently they do it for two reasons. Number one, a lot of competition shooters are worried about getting premature lock open. They're shooting their match and then it locks open, but they still have rounds in the magazine. You know, they might go do a reload, but they didn't need to. The second reason why competition shooters don't like having a slide lock on their guns is when you're using extended magazines, you can over insert them. And when you over insert them too hard, you can end up bending your ejector in the middle of a competition. And now all of a sudden your gun's getting more malfunctions because the angle of the ejector is wrong. Something new I learned, I had no idea. Now something else to consider about any gun that you're gonna get from Legion Precision, there is a break-in period. Now, Legion Precision, as I mentioned earlier, what they'll do is they will hand fit every single part, then they will test fire the gun. They're gonna make sure that your gun runs 100% reliably, but that's before they paint them or do a DLC coating, whatever the batch is. Once they paint them and coat them, now that's gonna introduce some stickiness into it that needs to be worn down. How do you break these in? First way is to get a bunch of ammo and go to the range and start shooting it and just clearing your mount functions and working through it. I figured out how to expedite that and it's really easy. All you need is a little bit of sandpaper. You need like some 240 grit, 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, stuff like that. And you're gonna need a lot of lubrication. You wanna always over lube a gun that's being broken in, even if it's a Glock build. Glocks, I don't run a lot of lube on, but when I'm breaking them in, I do. The first place that you're gonna need to take material out of your slide with some sandpaper is where your barrel lugs contact the slide. In that little nook and cranny area up in the slide there, you're gonna need to take some material out because that will give you stickiness when the gun doesn't wanna unlock. The second place is on the bottom of the slide. I forgot what the technical term for it is, forgive me, I just don't feel like looking it up right now. But the piece that strips the round off the magazine, that whole bottom piece will be Cerakoted. I sand all the paint off of that using 1000, 2000 grit sandpaper. On the frame, on the top of the surface where the disconnector is, where it rubs against that portion of the slide that strips around, I also take the paint off of that as much as possible. And then lastly is your safety selector. The safety selector is gonna be very sticky after Cerakote. And so it might even feel like it's really difficult to get it to move. But trust me, the best way to do this is to just sit here and do it with both sides and eventually it will break itself in. I bring all that up to say this. Some people don't understand how to break in guns. Legion Precision has had a few people call them saying, hey, what's going on? This gun doesn't work. It's, they do have detailed instructions in the box when they ship these out that tell you about the break in process and kind of how to do it. I was just giving you some extra info. So the next thing I wanna answer is would I carry this knowing what I know now. Well, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't carry any guns that have external safeties. I haven't trained with external safeties and I don't want to train with external safeties. It's just something else I gotta think about. So I don't wanna think about disabling my safety when I draw, then pressing out 
and shooting. I'm not saying that I won't ever do that, but as of right now in my life, I don't wanna do that. But let's pretend, for example, that I was the kind of person that did that. Would I carry this? Well, that kind of depends, right? So let's pretend you were carrying this, right? And you had to use it in self-defense. Now all of a sudden there's gonna be an investigation. You don't get your gun back for a year. Do you want to lose a gun that cost a few grand? I don't. Now, if you get certain types of concealed carry insurance, they'll actually replace the gun. However, because these are one of a kind guns, it won't matter. You know what I mean? So no, I'm not going to carry it. But let's just pretend, for example, that I paid the same amount of money for the gun. And let's pretend, for example, I have Elon Musk type money where I can make anything happen. Would I carry it knowing what I know now? Yes and no. So this is the tier one concealed MSP holster. I love it to death. Essentially, it fits any gun that has an X300 on it. I have been singing their praises for over a year now. I'll have links for these over at the parts list if you wanna check them out. I like carrying guns in the appendix position. Completely loaded, this gun weighs 76 ounces, or in layman's terms, four pounds, 12 ounces. Just four ounces shy of five pounds when it's completely loaded. My current daily carry is a Shadow Systems MR920 and I use mag extension tier one concealed holsters. This thing completely loaded weighs 55.5 ounces or three pounds and seven ounces. This is about one pound, five ounces lighter. So you gotta ask yourself, you know, do you wanna carry around that extra weight? Me, I'm more of a minimalist as possible when it comes to my concealed carry. So I don't personally wanna carry this gun, but I would trust my life with it if I was the kind of person that wanted to carry this gun. So let's talk about the pricing. When the original version of the TTB Chirac came out, they were $4,000 out the door, including the red dot, the couple mags, and the case. Legion Precision was actually barely breaking even on those guns. Because when you do knurled slides, it's much more expensive to do the machine work as it is to just do serrations, for example. Every single gun that they put together is built by two or three people and they do 100% QC check.